So let's say you've got an existing table and you need to make some changes to it. Well, luckily that's pretty easy in Access. I have over here my list of tables, and you can see them listed here, and I have my customers. And this is the one I want to make some changes to. When I double click on this, you can see it comes up with kind of a spreadsheet type of look. Now, this Access view may look like Excel, but it's not Excel. So what is this? Well, this is what's known as our data sheet view, and this is where we can enter data directly into our system. The problem with this is I can't easily make changes not to the design of my database from here. I, I can kind of cludgily work with it, but that's not what I want to do. So what I need to do is I need to go into my design view so I can work on this properly. Now, if I have an existing table and I'm in my data sheet view, I can simply, under my home tab, click on my view button where I have the construction looking tools. And these design tools will take me into design view or design mode if you prefer. The other way, and I'm going to show you this real quick, I'm going to close out this table for my customers, is I can right click on customers and choose design view. Both of those work equally well. What I want to do is I want to make some changes to existing fields. Now, in SQL, we have an alter command. In Microsoft Access, because it's GUI-driven, I can do it straight from my editor. So you saw in my data sheet view, and I'll bring this up again real quick, you see that it has the customer first name and last name. It's scrunched together. It looks just like the field name. And this is fine when I'm designing my database. This is fine for me as a database designer. But if I'm going to give this to other people to use, I want to change this. And so I'm going to make essentially like an alias for it. The way I'm going to do is I'm going to select a field I want to edit. So in this case, first name. I'm going to come down to my field properties and then to my caption. Now, you'll notice over on my right-hand side, you'll see the it's got a little description on what that field property does. So I'm going to type in first name. Notice I put in spaces and all those types of things just to make it a lot easier to read, a lot more user-friendly. The second thing I'm going to do is I'm going to check and see, okay, do I need this to be required? And this is the equivalent of saying is null. And right now it's allowed to be null, but I want to always make sure that my first name is always entered. So I'm going to choose yes, it is required. And I'm also going to ask myself, does this field need to be indexed? Indexing is going to make our database grow in size, but it's going to improve its performance. So when would I need to index? Would I want to index every field? No. In fact, not every type of field can be indexed. So the type of fields I want to index are going to be used in specific cases. Number one, is it a primary or a foreign key? If so, I'm going to want to index it. The good news is Microsoft Access is going to do this for you by default if you follow the right protocols in creating those primary and foreign keys. The next instance I'm going to want to index something is, is it going to be something I'm going to search on? And if it's something I'm going to search on, then yes, I'm often going to want to index it. Now, depending upon your company, when you look up a customer, you may look them up by a name, a phone number, an email. You don't know. Maybe a combination. So we're going to go ahead and assume that you're going to look up people by name and possibly a first and a last name. So I'm going to come over here and say index. I'm going to say yes. And I just double clicked on it to bring it up and said yes, but duplicates are okay. This way, if I have two people that are named David, it's okay. They're both going to show, and it's not going to block one from coming in. I'm going to do this also for last name, exact same thing, and change my caption. Say it's required and index, but duplicates are okay. Phone, I'm going to leave alone as far as the caption goes but I am going to say index yes, and I'm going to add a new field, and this is going to be email. With an email, I may choose to create a different data type. This specifically is the hyperlink, and I can choose where or not I want to do that. This 
opens up a couple of interesting potential problems, but also good things about it. We have to ask ourselves, is that what we really want? Usually, email can be simplified with short text. Now, most databases don't have a hyperlink. So in that case, you probably use something like a short text or its equivalent, probably a varchar or a char. I'm going to choose the short text just for consistency's sake. Most databases don't require 255 characters. Is it required? No, I'm not going to require an email address. Am I going to index it? You know what? I think I will because that might be something we can look up on if it's provided. In this case, I'm choosing I don't want duplicates. I just double clicked on it again. Of course, I can use the little drop down arrow on my far right hand side to see my whole list if I want to. Now, the reason I chose for no duplicates in this instance is because it's pretty rare for people to share an email address. So if the same email address is shown, I probably am using that in another case with another person already. And so I'm going to look at keeping it like that. But that's how I can go about making some changes to an existing table and even changing existing fields to make it easy to work with and set up. I'm going to click the Save button, and that's just going to save my changes that I have. Notice I did not have to go to File, Save. I just use the Save on the upper left-hand side. That saves the changes to whatever object I'm working on, in this case, the table. And I'm going to go back to Datasheet View real quick. You'll notice that when I do, you can see the changes that I made to my first name and last name in our captions, as well as having information for my phone and now email. And so that's how I'm going to make changes to an existing table and even existing fields in Microsoft Access.